angle E765RT from Plugin Alliance and Brainworks. In this video, we're going to go over all of the functions of this amp first, and then we'll look a little bit deeper at the recording chains because of course that's really gonna shape, uh, shape our tone. So let's go ahead and get into this. Now, if you are already familiar with the Plugin Alliance amps, all of this here will be uh, familiar to you, but let's go through it uh, real quick. So starting at the top toolbar, if I were to make a change, we have undo and redo here. And we have a bunch of different steps that you can go through there. We have A, B, C, and D. So essentially you can have four different presets per preset. So it's like different parameters, different snapshots, as you can see here. So if I want A to be on our channel one, and I want B to be on channel two, and then C to be something else, we can you know, set all of that up and then save our preset and then quickly, you know, switch between uh, those modes. All right. And of course, the settings of your effects rack will, of course, uh, apply to that as well, as you can see there. All right. Then we have copy and paste. So if I like A and I want that to be on D, I'll just copy it here and then paste it there. As you can see that. Then we have reset. So if I want to reset D, I can just reset D. If I want to reset C, I can reset C. All right. Then of course we have our effects rack, which we're going to get to in just a second. Now our presets will be located up here for Studio One and in a similar area for other DAWs. And then we'll come down to our tone stack here. So we have two different channels, as we've already heard this one here. Let me go back to A. This is the cleaner channel. Now this amp doesn't really get super clean. We can try to compensate for that by turning down the preamp gain here and then pulling up our master or the power amp right here. So we'll put it to about like this first and play that back. We'll clean it up a bit. Let's go to a different, uh, a different sample here. We'll go right here. Okay, and we'll try this sample here. All right, so kind of dirty right there, even with our gain on this cleaner channel, only around, you know, six or so. Now, if we compare that, let me turn this one off. If we compare that with our E646, and we go to the clean channel here, it's very, very clean. So I just wanted to, to uh, point that out for those who uh, might already have the E646 VS, which is a great amp, one of the absolute uh, best amp plugins out there. So let's head back to our uh, E765, turn it back on. Uh, we can also click the skin, by the way, and change the uh, color if you want to. So we'll come back here to our gain. We sort of uh, already heard that a little bit. <laughs> I'm just using my mouse scroll wheel to adjust uh, our parameters here much quicker that way. It's looking dirty up really, uh, really nice there. And then our bass. Mids. Of course the treble. volume for that uh, channel right there. Let's go back to this sample right here and we'll check out our bright switch right here. Let me come to the effects rack just because that gives us a uh, bigger view here. So turn our bright switch, uh, we'll have it off for now and you'll see how bright this actually gets. So 
So much, uh, much uh, sweeter tone with that off. Or you can have things really pop out with your bright switch. Then, of course, as mentioned, the volume. So let's go on to channel two. And that switch is right there. So channel two is, is of course, our higher gain, uh, our higher gain channel there. Then we have a tone switch, and that's going to mess with our mids here. It's going to change sort of the response of those mids. Let me go to a different sample again. So a bit more aggressive overall. Let's turn the uh, delay off for now. And of course, our low end here for our bass. And let's go to something a little more metal here. Our mids. And our treble. Of course, just dial all of that into taste and of course the overall volume for this channel as well. Then we have a gain boost uh, for our channel two here and this gets really, uh, really gain heavier. So with our gain boost on, I can even take this down to like two or three, still get a really good uh, heavy gain sound there. All right, and then of course our master there for our power amp. So that is the front panel there. And we'll head back to the effects rack again. We can just click here on angle to get to uh, get to that, or of course, click the effects rack. And across the top here, we have a noise gate built in. And if you look at this sample right here, you can see between these palm mutes are of course silence or at least lower levels. So we'll use our noise gate to clamp down on any amp noise or anything in between those uh, those areas. Pop it on, you'll see the light come on uh, whenever that gate is uh, initiated. So if I had this on right now, you can hear that amp noise. If it's off, pop it on there. So hear this real quick. So without it on, you're getting all that amp noise in between uh, our, uh, our palm mutes there. So you can use this to get really genty uh, with the sound. Just set your threshold for the overall level, and then we have a range control. So if you just wanna dim the uh, area between here, you can pull this down or really cut it off way up here. And again, we're gonna hear that real quick here. The gate comes on, but of course it's not doing anything because we need to set a range in here. Just kind of dimming that area where we can really clamp down on that. All right, that is our gate. Let me pull this down a bit. And then onto our filter section right here. So what we have here is a, is a high pass and a low pass, essentially. And we can set this for post or pre, and pre is going to filter out the sound before it hits the amp. So basically your dry guitar sound. And that's the same for both of these, our tight and our smooth. So our tight controls the low end and our smooth controls the, uh, the uh, top end there. And for tight, again, we can go say post or pre. So if you're using a nine string guitar, something like that, you might want to filter this out up to around 90 or so to filter out some of that low end of those eighth and ninth strings uh, so it doesn't get so boomy and sometimes sort of boxy, uh, boxy sounding. So let's come to a different sample. So I'm pre right now. Take it down. 
or post, which would be the same thing as putting a high pass after your amp. So use this to control your low end and I'm gonna put it on pre right now, maybe down to 60 or so. And then smooth can control the top end, again, either post or pre. So if your, if your pickups are really bright, you can filter those out in pre, or of course, put that a uh, low pass in post, which again is the same as putting a low pass EQ after, uh, after this amp. Go to pre. And post. The post setting can be useful if you're getting like a lot of fizz, a lot of noise as well. All right, so that is our filters right there. I'm gonna put it on post for now and about up to 16. Let me go back to this recording chain. And of course there is a delay included here. Let me go back here to this uh, blues sample, pop it on. We can tap for our tempo. We can adjust our tempo. You can double click and type in a tempo. You can take whatever tempo you have and say times two or divide it by two. It's on 120 right now because that's what our host BPM is. And we can have different uh, time signatures uh, based on that as well. And this delay sounds really, really good. And of course we have our mix, the feedback. So how many times is it gonna keep feeding back? And then a lo-fi, which kind of dirties it up just a little bit. It sounds, sounds really good. So let's hear that. Let's go to channel one first. <laughs> So that's just going to keep going on now because that feedback's on 100%. Still going, still going, still going. All right, so start around 10% for your mix and somewhere around 25% or so for your feedback. You might even want to take it down to 10 or so. And then just lo-fi to, uh, to taste. our input gain stage. So you can really hit that preamp harder if you want, or of course you can pull that down. Then just control click to put that back to the center. You can bypass your preamp if you want, you know, maybe you want to send it out to a different preamp plugin or something like that, which you can of course do. Power amp, bypass that. Then power soak it if you want to get sort of a different tone where you're really uh, you know, getting that uh, sort of a power amp distortion if you compensate with that. Pull that back down, control click, put it around, you know, minus six, minus 10 or so to uh, start out. All right, cool. And we'll move on to a little bit of a metal sound here. So this amp can do rock and hard rock. 
and it can even get into metal territory as well. Go back to 16 there. It's one of my favorite uh, favorite ones. But it's not as high gain. Uh, our E765 is not nearly as high gain as our E646 VS is. Let me make sure that delay is off there. And we can even have, so we have 16 here as well, which is the same, uh, the same uh, recording chain there, as you can see. So our E646, put that on channel three or four, and this is much more of that metal sound. <laughs> All right, so there's more gain, of course, in our E646 VS, and the clean channel is even cleaner than the uh, E765. All right, so again, bypass that one, come back to our E765, and now we'll get into our recording chains, which are, of course, impulse responses of an entire recording chain, which means basically your guitar cabinet and your microphone. Okay, so instead of choosing a different cab, a different mic, you just choose your impulse response. And if you want to use your own impulse responses, just head down here and select the empty cabinet bypass. And of course, it's going to sound awful because there's no, you know, there's no cabinet there. So we can, of course, click and select your impulse response. You can use your plus or your minus to scroll through those. And we also have this auto mode. So whenever you're playing guitar or playing back your audio file, it can automatically switch for you either one bar all the way up to uh, to eight bars. So with that engaged, it's going to automatically switch. So just turn it on. And once you're done, just turn auto off and uh, find the one that you preferred. So that is your recording chains. And now we'll uh, hear some more samples and go through these recording chains because the recording chain you choose is of course gonna make a, a huge difference to your sound. So if we just play here and then choose something up here, it's radically different, right? Pretty good one there. So 
just find something that you like and create a preset. And of course, maybe create a dirty preset on A and then a clean preset on B and C and D. And then you can quickly uh, switch between those for like a whole set. You know, if you have a if you have a clean part and then a dirty part, so on and so forth, it's just quicker to switch uh, switch between those like that. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about our Engel E765RT from Plugin Alliance and Brainworks.